So my youngest daughter, Skylar, she's in this beautiful age. She is 12 years old. She's a sixth grader and she's just starting to figure out right here in her preteen years what it means for her to be Skylar. It's adorable. She's in this place where she's trying to discover her own beautiful autonomy and she's also trying to self-differentiate from, from me, her mom, and what does it mean to be Skylar and not just Skylar as part of this whole family systems unit. Uh, it's a beautiful time for her to go through life as it is with every preteen or teenager. This time where you really just sort of discover who you are. And so she's in this moment and uh, she's our fourth child. So it doesn't quite bother us as much as it did maybe in the first three children. Uh, so Skylar, the other morning, she came downstairs and she was wearing this crazy outfit. <laughs> she had like a sweater on and then these sweatpants that didn't really match the sweater. And as soon as I looked at her, I said something. I said, Sky, you know, honey, like that outfit doesn't really match. It doesn't really go together. You wouldn't really wear sweatpants with a sweater. And so she did what every preteen does is that she rolled her eyes and she goffed at me. <sighs> She said, you're just trying to control me. And then she marched herself up the stairs to change. And see, the reason I even told her that she didn't match is because I love her. I didn't want her to go to school and sort of be made fun of for this mismatched sort of outfit. I was trying to guide her. But what um, I saw as love, she saw as control, as she's trying to figure out who she is. Now, this is a lot like what happens in the book of First Corinthians that we're going to dive into here today. The early church is trying to figure out who they are and who they follow and how to act and, and how to get along with each other. At the same time, the Apostle Paul, the author of the letter of First Corinthians, he's trying to coach them. He's trying to love them. He's trying to show them like ways that would be good and healthy for them to go off as they kind of become their own church. I'm so glad and honored that you joined us for this study. Scholars, when they look at the book of 1 Corinthians, they said that it's either about control or it's about love. And we're going to be able to explore this theme throughout our entire study. I'm glad that you're here. Throughout the series, you're going to see these themes of love and control kind of represent, represent themselves. Who's in charge of this church and what exactly does that look like? At the same time, we're going to be asking ourselves, what does it mean to live the good life? Just as my 12-year-old Skylar is trying to figure that out as she figures out who she is, what does it mean to move forward as her own person? Uh, the early church was trying to figure this out too. What does it mean for us to live as these new converts to Christianity in this space, in the, uh, the story of Corinth, in the city of Corinth? What does it mean for us to live together as the church? Um, so here's the backstory I want to give you before we start to dive in to all of our readings here today. Um, first of all, the book of 1 Corinthians, the letter of 1 Corinthians, is followed by 2 Corinthians when we read it in our New Testament in the Bible. Now, the Apostle Paul, he wrote nearly most of the New Testament through these letters as he had his own conversion moment that we can read about in the book of Acts. He went and he started to form these little churches all over the Middle East. And one of those churches was in the city of Corinth. After he formed and sort of developed these churches, he'd go and he'd leave um, so that they can continue their own work built on the foundation of Jesus Christ in that area. And then he'd go and he'd start another church and he'd go and he'd start another church. That's why we have all of these letters that he's writing to his churches. Uh, now we call this 1 Corinthians, but actually as we read this book, we'll discover that it's actually his second letter to the Corinthians. The first one uh, we don't have access to anymore. The first one is actually lost. Uh, later in the book, you'll hear him say, um, in my first letter, you'll remember. And so when we read that, we understand that this is actually probably the second letter to the Corinthians, but it's the first one that we have. Now, Paul, he's writing to offer some love and encouragement for this church uh, in the city called Corinth. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the geography where Corinth is at. So Corinth is this little, uh, it's this big city, actually. It's this big city on a little piece of land. So there's all of Greece, and then there's this tiny little piece of land that we call an isthmus, which, you know, you can use in trivia the next time. So this isthmus, it is where Corinth is located before the other big body of, la of land for Greece. And so at its widest, this isthmus, it's only about four miles apart. And so it 
Corinth, it was this uh, home of land traffic, people trying to get from this part of Greece down to the lower part of Greece. But it was also a port city. People would actually sail up and instead of uh, sailing all the way around, which is like 200 and something miles of dangerous sea, they would sail up, they would unload all of their things, walk it across these four miles and then put it onto another ship. And so it was this big popular town. Uh, it was this hopping city. It was known for one that was leaders in thought, leaders in fashion, leaders in all of the things. It was like the place to go. It was also known as a place where the morals were loose. Uh, the Greeks, they had a temple there, uh, the temple to the um, the god Aphrodite. And so uh, their prostitutes sort of ruled the town or priestesses as they were called in that time. And so you had all these people kind of coming in and out, all these loose morals there in the city of Corinth. And right in the middle, you have this little church church that Paul has started. Uh, I heard a preacher say, um, when you're talking about Corinth, you have to use the phrase like you use for Vegas, like what happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. So it's that kind of city that this little tiny baby church has been started. It's been built. So the apostle Paul, he wrote this letter. Uh, originally when he visited Corinth, it was around 50 AD. And as he was there, he got to know some other people, um, some other tent makers named Priscilla and Aquila. And they helped kind of get this church started. They helped to get this church off the ground. And we learn from the, another book of the Bible that Paul, he's starting this church with Priscilla and Aquila for about a year and a half. So he's there about 18 months to get it going before he leaves. And then he has to write his letters to keep telling him what to do. Um, but as they were there, um, after Paul left, an apostle named Apollos came in and he started to support this church. He started baptizing more and more people. They also uh, were able to have influence from Cephas, which is Peter. Uh, it means rock. So it's the apostle Peter's also doing some work in there. So this little church in this loose city, uh, they're trying to figure out how they are to be together. They're trying to figure out how to love each other and how to share things in common. And these big questions come up as they're trying to figure all of this out. Big questions like, uh, if we're Christian, uh, can we get divorced? Or what does it mean about spiritual gifts? So they have questions like, oh, if somebody offers meat to one of the Greek gods or the Roman gods, are we allowed to eat that meat? So all of these questions, uh, they said, what does it mean if I want to date a non-believer? And so all these questions are coming up as the church is trying to figure out how to be the church. First Corinthians, it starts off just like all of Paul's letters. I want you to imagine for a second uh, when you're reading it, when you're diving into this chapter here today, imagine you're reading it on a scroll. So as you open up that scroll, you don't want to have to unwind the whole thing to see who this letter is from. Instead, like all of Paul's letters, it tells you right away who this is from. It starts to say, um, Hi, this is Paul. I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. I've written the letter and this is who it's to. So it's right there all in the first couple of of verses. But then there's this beautiful greeting. It says, grace and peace to you from God, our Father and Lord and Jesus Christ. And then what Paul does is Paul starts off with an admonishment of gratitude. He wants to acknowledge the work that the church in Corinth is doing. He says to them, he says this, he says, uh, I give thanks to my God always for you by the grace of God that you've been given to you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you've been enriched to him in speech and knowledge of every kind. I just love that he supports them right out of the gate before for trying to talk about some of the issues that they have going on. I wish I kind of got letters for that. So there's your backstory to 1 Corinthians. I'm so glad that you're joining us here for this study. Uh, each day, we're going to offer you a couple of questions for you to journal about, think about, talk about in your small groups, whatever that looks like. So number one, I got a question. Um, how has love and control sort of intersected in your life? Uh, maybe that comes to your partner or your kids or, or maybe even things that you do for yourself. How do you love yourself and control yourself? And number two would be the question, how do you define the good life? When you think about what it means to live a good life, what does that mean for you?